This nice performance uh, is going to be all three of uh, Bogoslav Martinu's cello sonatas. And uh, I happen to be a specialist on this composer, which makes it somewhat difficult to speak about him, because when you specialize so much, you might, in the end, find it hard to say anything at all. So I have actually, I've, uh, uh, in the uh, program notes, I've given you uh, my version of his life story, something about his aesthetics. Uh, but just briefly, what I'm going to talk about, so you know that Martinu uh, was a Czech composer, and there's a certain way that uh, certain composers are discussed, you know, who come from these different Eastern European countries. But uh, this is really not so important for understanding Martinu. Martinu was really a very cosmopolitan person, his personality, and the kinds of things that he was really concerned about when he wrote, wrote his essays really did not have to do with nationalism at all. In fact, uh, uh, he thought that nationalism and uh, looking for national content in musical works was not helpful. Uh, briefly, Martineau, he left Czechoslovakia in 1923. He lived in Paris for 18 years. And then, uh, due to the occupation of Czechoslovakia, he moved to America. And he lived uh, on the American East Coast in New York. And uh, one of the things that I have focused on is, is some of his writings from his American years during World War II. And uh, what I have come to, I have come to the conclusion that Martin is very much interested in helping common listeners listen better, helping young composers understand music better so they can compose uh, with more fluidity, and also performers as well. So Martin was interested in uh, removing the obstacles that you know these different players in the musical processes have. Um, two things that he comes back to quite often are um, technical analyses. Okay, so some of you might know about form and content, things like sonata form, and uh, the way certain kinds of instrumental works are broken up into detail. So Martin thinks that this is really not very helpful for understanding work. And as far as certain portions of a form go, you know, you'll hear quite clearly in some of these movements that there's a quite clear recapitulation. It's not necessary for somebody to point these things out. So one of the things that he was discouraged, uh, uh, disagreed with was trying to break compositions down so we can better, better understand them. And another thing that he was concerned about was the tendency for people to make up stories about the music and what the music means. Okay? Here we have three purely instrumental works. So, uh, you know, what stories could we tell about this? Quite clearly, you know, the first sonata composed in 1939, uh, during the time his home country was just being absorbed by uh, Nazi Germany. And, you know, I, I was listening with great, great interest uh, to uh, my colleagues rehearse these uh, works, and I realized the second movement is very much like a funeral march. Okay, and you can actually hear something that sounds like percussion that's slowly going through the movement, okay? And you could read into this, but this is not really what Martin wanted. You can hear quite clearly that the first work is a quite, is a somewhat tragic work, that the uh, second work is rather uh, dramatic, and the third work is quite joyful. These, these are things that you will hear right away. Uh, one of the things that Martin wanted, uh, composers and performers and listeners, in fact, is to understand how composers compose. And uh, one of the things he wanted to demonstrate in his writings was that the musical work comes into being as uh, in the form of a subconscious process, that the composer might be inspired by something to compose a piece of music, but then there comes a process where the composer thinks about the work subconsciously. And this is the basis for which we must understand musical works, the, the way we un must understand musical composition. And this is the basis upon which we can begin to understand music. That um, the composer works out the piece purely abstractly, and then the composer has got a complete picture of the work in his mind, and then he begins to write it down on the paper. One of the things that he uh, encourages students to do, young uh, or student composers, is to imagine a famous work, like perhaps like Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony, or any work that it's very familiar to all of us. And just to try to imagine the work without notes, that 
the work actually has a compositional wavelength. There's like a compositional wavelength that the composer establishes in his mind. And then basically, uh, the composer fills out that compositional wavelength with music. There are different options of what you can put on that compositional wavelength. And in the end, the composer rises, uh, arrives at a possible solution. So as far as performers go, you might have heard uh, you know, in a large orchestral concert where the conductor comes out and thinks for a moment, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and sort of, it seems like, meditates. And this could be comparable to what Martineau describes as establishing the compositional wavelength. So just as an experiment tonight, we can just take the, the beginning of the very first cello sonata, Martineau's very first cello sonata, and we can just stop and try to clear our heads for a moment. And uh, let's just hear the very, very opening of this piece. And we'll stop and we'll leave a moment of silence. And you can try to visualize in your minds where exactly this composition lies. you need to identify what fits in with the composition and what does not fit in. And it's when you s start writing things down that don't fit in, you have to get rid of them. You, 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 you can only choose things that really fit into the compositional wavelength, into the gestalt that the composer has established in the subconscious mind. And once when the composer has a strong enough idea, this is when he can begin sketching. So this is what Martin wants us to do, is to think holistically, or to listen holistically. And uh, with these words, I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues for these performances. So it's just a note, after the first cello sonata, after the first sonata, there will be a five to 10 minute intermission. Then we'll play the second two, and uh, there it is. <laughs> 